Thank you so much, Louise. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to OTS Connects. Uh, thank you for giving of your own time to join us tonight. It's so wonderful to see um, so many of you here from all over the province. Uh, welcome. I am absolutely delighted at the number and variety of webinars that we've been able to schedule for you for our 2015 Winter and Spring Program. Uh, at the end of the session, Louise will put up a link um, or just go to the calendar and check out upcoming sessions and do share uh, the calendar link with your colleagues. Tonight, uh, we have a very dynamic and knowledgeable team who will be facilitating our webinar on Teach Ontario, a professional community for educators. It is my pleasure to welcome Nikki Luscombe and Albert Wisco from Teach Ontario and our team of teachers. We have Derek Schellenberg, Colleen Rose, and Maureen Aslan. So, welcome everyone. Nikki, I will now turn the mic over to you. Great. Thanks, Syria. It's so nice to be here and hello to everyone virtually. Uh, I know I was asked to give a very brief introduction and by way of a bio on on me, I'm the Senior Corporate Communications Specialist here at TVO. I feel very lucky to be here at TVO and very, very lucky to be a part of the Teach Ontario uh, program, product, working together with everyone. Uh, I should also probably share that I come from a, a family of teachers. My grandmother and my aunt taught in those like one room classrooms. I think they love to tell the stories of teaching kids from kindergarten right up to 12, if that's possible, in one room. I have uh, uncles and aunts. I, my uh, brother-in-law is a secondary school teacher down in London. And my dad even went to teacher's college, but he, was, um, he wasn't really cut out for it. And he ended up going into school photography. Um, so we still had the whole world of teachers. Um, and he still loved to correct my grammar. So anyhow, let's start with a quick poll. Um, how many of you here have found yourself going down the hallway, maybe around the corner, to ask another teacher for some professional learning advice? You can use your handy check marks. Oh, I'm seeing lots of green check marks. This is good. Yeah, 11, 13, wow. Excellent. Well, I, I'm not seeing any X's. So this is good news. Oh, I like the, the visual check marks too. That's cool. Um, so now, instead of going down the hall, imagine that you can swap that information and all of your insights online without boundaries across the province. Teach Ontario is a new website that supports knowledge exchange amongst Ontario's teachers. It's a website for you. It features content created by Ontario's teachers for Ontario's teachers and allows you to stay up to date on the latest in teaching and learning and in digital tools. And as I say, it connects you to other teachers across many boards and many districts and across, of course, our great province's vast regions, as we saw on that map, all with the ultimate goal of improving student outcomes across the province. Since early 2014, TVO has worked with a number of educational partners to develop Teach Ontario. And we're incredibly thankful to OTF and its uh, educational affiliates and the Ministry of Education for all of the support that we've received and that they've provided in creating this truly collaborative website. Together, we've created a really powerful digital tool that supports teachers as they make a greater impact to help students succeed. So this is a nice long list. It's probably too much detail. I don't expect you to read it all. I just thought I'd throw it in here to give you a sense of all of the features that we were asked to reflect in Teach Ontario as we were developing it last year. Uh, and we reached out to many teachers, uh, many of whom gave their, their time very generously to give us this kind of feedback and this specificity to tell us exactly what they were looking for. So we're very thankful for all of that feedback and, and all of the collaboration. And this is a long list. And in, in fact, I think it goes on to a second slide. Yes, it does. Um, but I thought I'd share it with you just to give you a sense of all the features that, that users like you, teachers, were looking for. 
And I'm pleased to say I think we've delivered on all of these features. So, you know, we're going to get into this depth later, but really you'll find a couple in these, this long list, a couple of the bullets. You can post a blog. You can start a community. Um, you can access TVO's educational resources, etc. You can share content on social media. You get the idea. So I'm going to wrap it up shortly, but let me first give you a very brief overview of how the website is organized, and then I'm going to hand it over to Albert, who's going to provide much more depth. The website really offers you three key functions, and you'll see them across the top from left to right. Explore, where you can explore a lot of great curated resources. Share is an area where you can share your knowledge in groups, and we'll get into that a little bit more. It's quite cool in there. And create, which is an area that we've dedicated to uh, collaboration. And there's a wonderful collaboration, collaborative product, uh, project rather, in that area that we'll, we'll get into later. So I know that not everyone here has had a chance to register, but once you have, you'll be able to look around, and you're going to see a number of various, a number of functions, and you're going to just kind of get the power of this great website. I'll just give you a quick list of some of the things you can do here. You can read up on the latest research, latest information on education in Ontario. You can follow other inspiring educators. You can write your own blog posts. You can upload videos and artifacts from your classroom. You can access and use TVO's digital learning resources for your classroom. You can start or join a new online community based on, say, subject matter, or grade, or interest. And ultimately, you can share and exchange your professional knowledge. So it is a growing community of educators. I thought I'd just throw this in, Maureen. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> um, I was on Twitter looking around. And uh, although Teach Ontario is still in a beta phase, we have gone from 15 teachers in the summer to 1,500 registered today. So we are super thankful, again, for all of the wonderful feedback that we've had from teachers like Colleen, Derek, and Maureen, who have helped us to shape this website and make it the best possible website it can be for Ontario's educators. So now, I think I'll hand it over to Albert to tell you a little bit more. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks so much. Um, I guess everybody can hear me. Um, thanks to OTS and to all of you for joining us tonight. This is a, a real uh, honor. Um, so my name is Albert, and there I am on the slide, Teach Ontario's Community Manager. I love what I do, and one of the best, one of the biggest parts of my role is to make sure our community gets the help it needs to get up and running um, and to help with connections um, on, the, uh, on Teach Ontario. So that said, you can always send me a message on Teach Ontario. Uh, my handle is community manager. Or you can email me at uh, community manager at tvo.org. And there will be, um, um, I think, a slide. Um, um, there will be an image of that, uh, of these addresses, um, in what we're going to click on to, a video. So like I said, we've put together a video that will take us on a quick, I hope it's quick, four minute and 19 second tour of Teach Ontario looking at Yes, one, the home page, two, your profile, and three, groups. So here we go. I'm just going to jump on for a second, folks, and let you know what we're doing. We're going to switch over to web tour mode, and I'm going to drop in a link for a YouTube video that's going to start playing right away, and Albert's going to walk you through the Teach Ontario site. I'm also going to put that link in the chat. So if your whiteboard space never turns into a video, you can click on the link in the chat. And if that link doesn't work, you can highlight that text for the YouTube link and paste that in a browser. And then uh, it should play for you there. It's about four minutes long. And when you're finished the video, you can come back and give us a green check mark to let us know that you're done. Great. Well, thanks so much for watching that. And as I said in the video, it's just a taste of what uh, Teach, Ontario, Teach Ontario can do. 
Um, and as I said, I'm here to uh, uh, um, answer any questions. You can message me on Teach Ontario or email me. Um, so um, that would be great. And um, um, now I'd like to pass the microphones over to um, three of our terrific folks on Teach Ontario um, who are who have been crucial to shaping um, Teach Ontario to make sure it's right for teachers. And they are Colleen, Maureen, and up first to speak um, is Derek. Thanks, Oliver. Um, good evening, everybody. Before we get started with the teacher portion of our webinar, can we have a quick check mark from everybody to let me know that you're hearing me and that you are fully conscious, or more or less conscious? Excellent. Thank you. Um, we want to thank Syria as well as Nikki for introducing tonight's session and explaining some of the ideas behind and intentions for Teach Ontario, as well as Albert, the Teach Ontario tech guru, for the amazing instructive video, If in Doubt, Ask Albert. Not only is he knowledgeable, he is quite responsive, so if you have any query as you're looking around the site, let him know and he will get back to you very quickly. We also need to thank Louise, who's been tireless in our attention to detail and ensuring that tonight's se session runs smoothly. The slide you can see here was designed by one of tonight's co-presenters, and I think it does a great job of connecting the home page of the site with the province of Ontario. And you can see that Colleen has added a number of key details relating to the site. She will explain some of those ideas in her section of the webinar. So, I want to welcome everybody. My name is Derek Schellenberg. I'm an English teacher at my high school in Newmarket, Ontario. And I'm fortunate enough to teach at a BYOD school where every student brings their own computer to assist in their learning each day. I want to welcome you not only to this webinar, but also to the main hall of my school as you walk through the front doors. We hope that this will be both an informative and intriguing webinar for you and ultimately beneficial to everybody's teaching practice. There's a Google link at the top. We will provide that for you. Um, and you're welcome to check it out in greater detail when you have time, make a copy, etc. Thank you, Louise. And even ask us questions about various aspects of the presentation during tonight's session via email or ideally on the Teach Ontario site. And in my other computer, I'm watching as people are entering the Google slideshow and checking it out. So that's great. So, in addition to Nikki and Albert from TBO, we have three other presenters with quite different backgrounds, boards that we teach from, et cetera, and you'll have a chance to get to know them briefly as they introduce their section of tonight's webinar. We have Maureen Aslan from a Halton Catholic District School Board, Colleen Rose from Superior Greenstone District School Board, and myself from York Region District School Board. First, I'm going to talk about some of the features and opportunities that Teach Ontario offers. Colleen is going to go through some specific ways to use, interact with, and contribute to the site. And Maureen is going to give you a few options for some specific tasks that you can complete and hopefully share with us as you get more familiar with navigating the site and using some of its features. With both the number of TVO and teacher co-presenters, as well as the expertise of Louise, please feel free to use the chat box throughout tonight's session at the bottom left to get help, ask questions, make comments, etc. The presenter speaking, currently me, will probably not be able to follow along with the chat discussion, but there are plenty of other people who will be able to communicate with you throughout tonight's session. So, a couple questions that I start with whenever I'm introduced to anything new, not what is Teach Ontario, but that is a key question that I'm assuming you're ask, asking. But I think the other question specific to teachers is, what does the platform offer me? What does the platform offer teachers? So we're hoping to address part of that tonight, and I think we're already in great shape in terms of what Nikki and Albert have already introduced you to. Um, we want to be inclusive when we say teachers, as any and all people connected to the field of education can find connections, content, and areas of interest in the Teach Ontario site. So it's beneficial for all. 
So we can see some fine looking students here. And I think in everything we do, although it seems rather obvious, we want to place our students at the forefront. I personally think of teaching as this ongoing renovation that never ends in a house. You love it. You invest all of your blood, sweat, and tears into that house, as well as a considerable amount of money. And there's always more that could be done. Teaching is the same. We face these incredible challenges and demands on our time, and we have to be pretty disciplined to carve at any time in our lives for friends, family, and personal interests. I'm an English teacher. It's a whole bunch of metaphors. So the question is, how can Teach Ontario add value to my practice without making additional demands on my time? Ideally, after the initial learning curve and Teach Ontario becomes a tool that you're comfortable using, it will not only add value to your practice, but hopefully actually make your use of time more efficient as you identify and gather useful resources and join groups of teachers that have the same areas of interest and maybe a little bit further along in their learning in some of your common areas of interest. So, as was stated before, Teach Ontario has been designed around a simple three-section structure. Explore, share, and create. It manages to balance the challenge of simultaneously being both easy to navigate and expansive in what it already contains, while having room for growth and contributions over time. While the Teach Ontario site is going to be initially unfamiliar, it soon becomes an online resource where you can quickly travel to whatever you need to in just a few clicks. The first section of the site, ideal whether you're still in teacher's college or an experienced 15 or 20 year teacher, contains curated resources. You can see links to ministry documents, access research, visit a collection of amazing teacher blogs, some of which we're going to reference later, and even access some of the fantastic and timely digital TVO resources. Here you can see, in addition to the ministry documents, which are always a great place to start for teachers, you've got things like Edugains, fantastic videos, great tutorials, highly recommended. And over here we have the TVO digital resource pilot. What I like about this is if you look at the top, you can see that it's organized in terms of age and grades. So you can quickly gravitate to whatever your teaching level is. And not only will I check out secondary learners for grades 9 to 12, but as a parent I might look at 1 to 3 and 4 to 6 for my two boys. The second section, which I think Albert alluded to in his video, is probably currently the most high traffic area, and that's share your knowledge. Um, this is where the groups are formed, teachers communicate, questions and discussions take place, and resources by teachers are often shared. So this is a place where I head to right away whenever I go to the Teach Ontario site. The amount of groups and the variety of groups is fantastic. And this is just a small sampling of them. And you might recognize some of the names as you look at them. The majority are open, but you can have a closed group as well. Colleen, for example, has formed one for her TLLP, I believe. So you can use the site as something where everybody is welcome, which is totally fine. Or it can be a specific site, a specific group only for that group of people and you can sort of share and develop your resources and it can be a location for them online to uh, track that learning. And here's some more of them. I think here's Colleen's right here. Um, we have Teach Ontario Talk Discussions, Inquiry Based Teaching and Learning. They're fantastic. And of course, if you don't find one that you're interested in, you can always start up that group. Lastly, we have our Create section, and it's got a focus on new tech projects. And when I think of it, I think sometimes it can actually just be simply new education projects, and technology is sort of the vehicle whereby the project moves forward. I see this section of Teach Ontario as being the section with the most potential for growth as people get more familiar and comfortable with tech tools where multiple users can work in the same document either online simultaneously or asynchronously over time 
with people contributing as they can, when they can. This was essentially the same process for the creation of this webinar presentation by the co-presenters. This slide here shows the relatively new project where educators will make contributions, which should not be limited to text only, to four areas or goals relating to education. So we can see work and well-being, we've got equity, we've got excellence and effective teaching, and I think public confidence and your passion. So you can choose to contribute to one, some, or all of these goals, and an ebook will ultimately be compiled from the responses. And here you can see some of the initial um, development of those discussions and posts. Albert's provided several prompts for reflection in terms of questions, and then teachers choose how they want to respond to them and connect them to their own life and teaching practice. Please take the time to look some of them over when you get a chance to explore the site and contribute, as you would anywhere, where you feel comfortable sharing some of your experiences and philosophy regarding teaching. So here's excellence and effective teaching. And then we have equity and Maureen. I have to be very competitive with Maureen, but she managed to beat me to this one first. So that was a little bit upsetting, but I'll be okay. So those are the three big sections of the Teach Ontario sites, but still asking, what else does Teach Ontario have to offer? And I think when I get introduced to something new, and I have to say that I'm fortunate, or maybe I'm old, in that I'm past that initial survival period of sort of treading water all the time, surviving from day to day, and can look a little bit forward. So when I come to something like this, you're looking first as a teacher, next as a leader, whether it's in your department, your school, your board, a mentor trying to help some of the young teachers and the teacher candidates visiting on the practicum, and then finally as a lifelong learner, which maybe is the most important. I want to model it for my students, also my kids, try to keep things dynamic, and also as a way of at least keeping young of mind. So, the great thing about Teach Ontario is I think that it meets you where you want to meet it. If you have an area of interest, you can find it here. If you have a group of people that you want to connect to, you can find them here. So it allows you to take on whatever role you're comfortable taking on in that specific area of education in this time of your career. In the bottom left, personal area of interest for me, Google Apps for Education. I'm happy to share my resources, and I think it's amazing that it seems so many teachers are. So I can be part of the discussion and help those who are starting to play with all the amazing apps. And you can see links to different resources. Relatively new, Google Classroom, an appealing potential replacement to learning management systems such as Moodle, Desire to Learn, Edmodo. I can take on the role of learner, ask the question, and then watch as the amazing responses come from all kinds of people. Um, the one that you see here, the correct answer, is from Brittany. And of course, it's not the only answer to the question. It was just an amazing resource that she posted. And it's fantastic for people interested in technology in any part of their educational practice, not just for Google Classroom. So this is what I think is amazing about the Teach Ontario site, being able to access other people's area of expertise and also being able to contribute. Some of the teach, uh, sorry, some of the blogs on Teach Ontario include, from York Region District School Board, we have Roy and Lee's Spicy Learning Blog, and it is an interesting mix of teaching, technology, and parenting. It never disappoints. My wife, who's Korean, was a little horrified by one of the staples, which is kimchi and Campbell soup mixed together. I don't know if we'll be trying it at home. Um, but it's an amazing site, and if you're interested in free Web 2.0 tech tools, check out Roy and Lee's blog. On the bottom left, we have Zoe Brannigan Pipes' blog, also accessible on the Teach Ontario sites, and it's called Pipe Dreams. And although she is well known for dealing with Minecraft in the classroom, it goes far beyond that in terms of the content. And you will probably run into her if you attend any conferences that are ed tech related in Ontario. 
I would also be remiss if I did not mention our co-presenter Colleen Rose's blog, Northern Art Teacher, which is not only aesthetically dynamic with all of her photography, art, but has amazing content as well as Colleen shares her learning journey in education. All of these are accessible in Teach Ontario. In this case, go to the Explore Curated Resource section and you'll find them. Kathy Griffin, um, another TLLP veteran, created a location to share conference opportunities. You can see ISTE's here in Philadelphia this year on the left. We've got ECHO, which is annually in the fall, on the right. And then we've got CONNECT, which is also in Niagara Falls in the coming May. Come see Teach Ontario presentations on May 6th. Myself presenting on all things Google May 7th, and Maureen presents as well on May 8th. There are a ton of other conference opportunities on Teach Ontario. Come check them out. One of the other amazing things that you'll find is links to professional development. And on the bottom right, we have OTF offering the Teacher Learning Co-op. And then we have these two images here for the Teacher Learning and Leadership Program. And these are slightly parallel in that um, they're both self-directed PD. Our board, and I'm sure lots of different boards call them collaborative inquiry. But the opportunity is amazing. And they're one-year projects. You manage your time, learning, budget. You work with a group of your own choosing. It's fantastic. The connections are there in Teach Ontario to these amazing opportunities. And not only that, but there's lots of graduates of the TLLP program who are regular contributors to Teach Ontario. They can help you in terms of applying, and they can share some of their experience with you, including the three co-presenters tonight. Trust me, trying one of these will radically transform your teaching practice. So this is just a view of the profile. Initially, you create it yourself, and you determine sort of what you're comfortable sharing with. You've got the people who are following you, the people you're following, and that's great in terms of the initial setup. But I think one of the amazing things in this site is that anything you bookmark, any actions that you take, resources you add, things that you follow, people you connect to, it's all tracked. So all that content you share, all the things you wind up being interested in, you don't have to go back and refine it each time. It's there. It becomes part of your profile. You can see this is in your view. So all those resources are there. So that's fantastic. So maybe fairly straightforward, but I think one of the other beautiful things about this site is you can access it from any device, anywhere. There's also the free Jive app. And I think which, what makes it even more efficient in terms of how you use it is that you can have notifications sent in terms of people you're following, group your groups you're a member of, right to your email. So you can visit the site on your own terms when there's new content in your own areas of interest. It doesn't have to be I'm going back to check all these areas all the time. It's sent to you, then you choose how you want to interact with the site. Fantastic. Sorry, a little technical difficulty there. So to sum up, I think it's an amazing time to be a teacher. There's so many different ideas to explore right now and experiment with in your classroom. It is not possible to do or try all of these initiatives in a year or perhaps even in a career. And it might be foolish to try. But Teach Ontario is an online location where you can find educators further along in their journey in one or more of these areas. And in some cases, you can take on the role of expert and contribute to the learning of others. So it's a growing, vibrant community of educators all working together and sharing while engaged in evolving their personal and professional practice and pedagogy. As a whole, it reminds me of nothing more than a group of like-minded learners rallying around a challenging and rewarding task. 
So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to transition things over to Colleen, our resident northern art teacher. Thank you. Holy cow, that was a great job, Derek. I got so caught up in your presentation that uh, I think I got a little bit distracted from preparing what I was going to say. <laughs> I got very caught up in it. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Colleen, I can hear you, but I'm going to suggest that you turn your mic sensitivity down just a little bit. Okay. Is that a little bit better? Yes, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. So hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here tonight. Great introductions by Nikki and Albert, and a really, really lots of great information from Derek already. So as I said, uh, it's like a really wonderful treat to be able to learn so many new things about a platform that I'm getting even more familiar with. So I'm, I know that I'm going to be listening to this session again tonight, or not tonight maybe, but at another time, just to be able to go over all of the points and uh, to review some of the things that I really want to learn. So my name is Colleen Rose. I'm up in Red Rock, Ontario, and I guess I should go to the next slide now that I know that I have control over this. There we are. Um, so yeah, Red Rock is right up here at the northern tip. Now I'm going to try and find uh, something to mark that with, one of these lovely symbols so that I can show you. And while I'm at it, just to refresh my memory, can you quickly put a little symbol on the map to show me where you are? are? I know that we did this earlier, but I just wanted to see where everyone is. I know that I think I remember seeing someone from Fort Francis even, which was pretty exciting. And then I saw that some, or, uh, my friend Jenny was attending tonight from Red Rock as well. I always think it's so cool to see so many participants from Southern Ontario because everyone seems like they're so together. Thanks, everyone. Um, now, there are two aspects about geography, about our province of Ontario that I wanted to speak to tonight. Um, one of them is the, the difference between Northwestern and Southern Ontario. I know that Living in Red Rock, I often feel isolated from Southern Ontario. I think it's assumed that educators who work in urban centers or, or close to them have it, <laughs> have it easier than those who live in the north if only for the fact that they're physically closer to each other. Um, Teach Ontario, I find, levels the playing field by offering equal access and plenty of opportunities to interact with other professionals in the province. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention uh, was the geographical aspect of um, working and traveling within our own boards. I know our board covers an area of just over 45,000 square kilometers and uh, a board that I I started working at when I began my teaching career just over towards the west, over toward our friend in Fort Francis, Kiwi and Patricia District School Board is apparently from their website just roughly 75,000 square kilometers. And these are huge, huge distances to travel, um, especially when educators and administration have to travel to connect. It can be tricky between the months of, let's say, October to April, which is most of our school year. So until we find a way to squish the province together, this is a great way to connect on Teach Ontario. 
There's the new slide there. Um, one of my favorite aspects, and I know that a few people mentioned this earlier, um, the benefits of sharing our information with each other. And I believe that sharing is caring. Uh, show someone you care by sharing a little something, even if it's a little bit. And this is especially true for those of you who are new to the site. Don't feel that um, you know you just need to sit back. Feel free to contribute at any time to what you see on Teach Ontario, because the more that you contribute, the more that you will get out of the site as well as other people too, because they'll be able to benefit from your experiences, your curiosities, your interests, everything. Even if it's something as little as a status update, a blog post, a reply to a discussion that someone else has already started. Um, and something that I feel is fairly important and personal to me, sometimes I'm not that social. But when I work online, I feel a greater sense of freedom. I, I can open up because I have time to think about what I want to say. And um, I have presented in the past about being introverted, but also the benefits of using technology and platforms such as Teach Ontario in order to be able to connect with others in a much more meaningful way. So I have a link in this slide um, to Break the Mold, um, which is a blog post that I have. Thanks, Louise. Um, I used it to present my thoughts on being a little bit introverted, but also making the most of technology to be able to connect with others in a really, really successful way. Now, can I just see uh, by the use of check marks or X's? Now, this might not be true for those who are joining Teach Ontario tonight because you haven't had a chance, but have you joined any groups yet? Okay, so a really good, like a really balanced mix of people who have and haven't joined groups. I would really encourage you to search through the groups. I know that Derek hinted at this earlier, where it seems to be the the highlight of Teach Ontario, and it really is such a rich area, full of diversity and varied interests. So really search through those groups, and if you find one that you like, join it. It's so easy to join, and you can find the groups under Share. If you can't find a group that you like or that you can benefit from richly, uh, think about the possibility of making your own group if you, if you can't find what you're looking for. Um, but also if you need to collaborate with others and you need a space to meet and keep track of your information, which brings me to my next slide right here. So this is what I did. I recently created a, a group for my TLLP group. And I've just started doing this, but already I'm seeing that it, it has the potential of helping us collect and curate our information to keep track of it when we need to produce reports later. And as you can see, there's a, there are a few tools that look really helpful. And I'm, I just began using the calendar tool. And I think I'm really glad that I'm starting to use it in this way. And I'm, I'm hoping that my group members can make the most of it and benefit from it as well. The lounge is I think my favorite part of Teach Ontario, although I have so many favorite parts, but I really do enjoy the lounge. It's easy peasy. 
it's laid back and with and it has a lot of variety. Some of the topics that I was just browsing through before tonight's session, uh, some of the topics were the weather, uh, TVOs, uh, sorry, special events and special days, but also TVOs February friendship contest. Now I'm going to clear this there. How many people have heard of the February Friendship Contest from TV or Teach Ontario? Can you give me a check or an X? Oh, see, this is great to know. There's, uh, there's more people who have not heard about our February Friendship Contest from TVO, but I would encourage you to take advantage of it because you could win a prize. There are some cool uh, TVO Kids t-shirts that you could have a chance of winning. And basically, you invite a colleague to join a Teach Ontario, you have them register, and then you fill out information on the document that is that you can find in the lounge. So you'll definitely have to make your way there so that you have the opportunity for winning something, which is super fun. I wanted to speak about social media because sometimes as educators, depending on our comfort level, we may or may not be that comfortable with a whole bunch of stuff that is seemingly coming our way. I know that, you know, I use Facebook and I use Twitter and I blog, but there's a lot of other stuff that seems overwhelming to me. Um, I know a lot of, like I've never touched Foursquare and I don't use um, some of the, the products that allow you to kind of sift through a lot of the the articles that are coming your way at a very fast pace. Um, so it can seem intimidating and even sometimes unprofessional. I know if you're, you're anything like me, you have friends and family members that use Facebook that you're connected with. So the chances of connecting professionally on that platform, um, you, may have, you may be a bit hesitant there. I've, this is another reason why I appreciate Teach Ontario because I I know what I can do there. I know the the expectations, and I have a I have freedom within those expectations. It's a it is a user friendly platform that helps us focus on matters that are important to educators, especially those working in Ontario. Um, some people don't take advantage of Facebook groups. Twitter chats or Google communities because they aren't structured or supported by the educational community. But I wanted you to know that you can rest assured that if you had Teach Ontario open on your computer, you wouldn't need to be stressed if anyone looked over your shoulder, which sometimes if you're tempted to open, let's say, Facebook or, or Twitter, you would worry if some, what someone would think if they saw that on your computer. However, if you happen to use Twitter, and I know that lots of, press, of educators do, including myself, if you happen to use Twitter, feel free to tweet about Teach Ontario by using the hashtag Teach Ontario, and I hope that someone can write that in the chat, in the chat box there as well as using the Twitter handle at TVO. Now, if you're familiar with Facebook or Twitter or anything of that sort, you're going to know that you will receive notifications when you take part in um, on some sort of platform like them. And Teach Ontario is like that where you do have, you should be checking your notifications and the arrow points here to where you will find those notifications and all you have to do is click on the little 
golden circle with the number and that will show you what's happening or something that you should be aware of. And this is the best way to keep up to date. Beyond that, click on Inbox and Activity, which Albert covered in his awesome video. I'm pretty sure it was there anyway. Uh, this way, you won't lose track of your notifications after you click on them. And I believe that's all for me. So I'm going to pass along the mic to Marina. Thank you, 